everybody, it's Saskia here from Little Bunny Bakers. Welcome back to another Let's Bake video. It's been a little while, but I'm really excited to be back today baking Gruffalo Crumble Muffins. Gruffalo Crumble Muffins. Hands up if you love the story of the Gruffalo. Hands up if you've never heard it before. That's absolutely fine too. Today we're going to be cooking together these delicious muffins and then if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to read the story of the Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson. So that should be really nice. Now, today for our cooking, you're going to need the following ingredients. For our crumble topping, we're going to need 20 grams of plain flour, seven grams of cold butter, seven grams of porridge oats, and five grams of brown sugar. If you don't have any brown sugar, it's quite tricky to get hold of at the moment. Caster sugar, white sugar is absolutely fine too. Then we're also going to need for the main muffin, 45 grams of plain flour, 15 grams of brown sugar. Again, you can swap that for the caster sugar if you need to. 15 grams of porridge oats, one egg, 10 grams of this funny thing. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. That's a bit of courgette. We're going to make our muffins nice and moist and a quarter of an apple. We're also going to need 40 milliliters of oil. I've got vegetable oil and a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla. And that will do us. You will need five cupcake cases. If you have any of these reusable silicone ones, these are fab, but normal cupcake cases will work just as fine. And I think that's everything, so we're ready to bake. Are you ready? Brilliant, let's start with the Bunny Baker's song. Welcome to Little Bunny Bakers. It's nice to see you here today. We're going to have a lot of fun baking. So come on, come on, let's bake. Hooray! <laughs> Well, it's really exciting to be baking with you again. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by making our muffins, then we're going to make our crumble topping, and then we're going to put it all together, and while it's in the oven, we're going to have a story together. Does that sound nice? Has everybody washed their paws? Clean paws? Maybe got a nice smart apron on like this one? I do sell them, grown-ups. <laughs> okay, let's turn the oven on to 180 degrees. Pop mine on. There we are, 180 degrees Celsius. So that's on, grown-ups have done that, and children, bakers, bunny bakers, we're going to start with our muffin mix. So in a large bowl, we're going to add our flour. So that's the 45 grams of self-raising flour. In it goes. And then to that, we're going to add our brown sugar and our porridge oats. So that is our three dry ingredients. And then with a spoon, you can give it a little mix around so it's all blended together. Oh, do you know, it's so exciting mixing with a spoon that says Little Bunny Bakers. Can you see that? It's a little bit covered in flour now. A little bunny baker's spoon. The height of excitement. Grown-ups, I do sell these as well. <laughs> there we go. So we've got our flour, our oats, and our sugar all blended together. And then into that, we're next going to be adding our fruit and vegetables. I wonder what sort of fruit and vegetables you enjoy eating. Can you tell me some of them? Oh, yes. Bananas. Grapes strawberries, carrots, butternut squash. Oh, you've got adventurous taste. So we've got some courgette and some apple here. And I'm just gonna pop them in my grater. This is called a standing rotary grater. And you turn the handle and it rotates the grater inside and grates it. But you can also get what's called a box grater, which stands up on its edge, or it might be lying down on its side where you move it up and down. Whatever you're using, graters are very sharp. So just make sure you're very careful. And if you need help from a grown-up, then ask. It doesn't matter, it's always good to have a little bit of help. So I've got my lovely apple and courgette. 
which I've grated. That's great, no pun intended. And I'm going to add the apple and courgette to my main mix. There we go. And then again, we just want to give that a nice gentle stir with our spoon. A little bit of brown sugar lump there. How have you all been doing? Have you been busy? Up to much? Arts and crafts? Reading? A bit of schoolwork? Maybe some adventures? Some walks? Bike rides? Anything like that? Any picnics going on in the garden? I've heard of quite a few people doing a lot of baking. I wonder if you've been doing any baking? I know I've been doing lots and lots of baking here at the borough. I've been making special boxes called bunny boxes that are like picnic teas. So lots and lots of baking going on on this end. Right, so we've got the dry part of our muffin mix. Are we all keeping up? Are we good so far? Excellent. And to that, we're going to add our wet ingredients. We have four wet ingredients today. The first is our oil. Now, look at the cuteness of this little jug. You might have seen this before. I love it, 40 milliliters. That is one miniature jug. Cutest thing in the world, apart from kittens and baby bunnies, maybe. So in that goes, I'm just going to pour it all over our mix. <clears throat> and then we're going to measure something called maple syrup. If you don't have maple syrup, not everybody has it in, you can use honey or even golden syrup, that would be fine as well. I love maple syrup. When I was a little bit younger, I used to live in a country called Canada, and maple syrup is from Canada, and they have lots and lots of trees called maple trees. And this is incredible, actually, I'll tell you what they do. They go outside, they've got these big trees, beautiful, beautiful red leaves, and they put a tap you know, like the ones that they have in the sink or in the bathroom where we wash our hands for 20 seconds a lot at the moment. And they put this tap next to the tree, they get a hammer and they tap, tap, tap it in. And this is called tapping the maple tree. And once the tap is in, they turn it on. And amazingly, out from the tap drips maple sap. The sap from inside the maple tree and what they do is they collect all of that sap and they boil it up really, really hot and it melts down, it shrinks down as all the liquid evaporates and becomes maple syrup. It takes 40 litres, that's an awful lot of maple sap, to make one jar of maple syrup. So it's a really special ingredient. I love learning about where ingredients come from. I think it gives you a really different idea about what you're eating. So, one tablespoon of maple syrup. When I'm baking with my daughter Annie, and we bake a lot together, we each have different jobs to do. And when it comes to pouring, that's my job. She knows I love pouring, and she gets to hold the spoon and tip it into the bowl. Different jobs for everybody. There we go, so we've got the oil and the maple syrup. Now we're just going to add a little bit of vanilla in. I'm onto the jar, I couldn't find any essence at the moment, so I've got a little bit of the real vanilla paste here. Bit of luxury in our muffins today. And then finally, we've got this. Now, I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera. I wonder if you can tell me what color it is. That's right. Well, then it is, in fact, a white egg. A white egg, which is quite mysterious because in England, we don't often have white eggs. And the reason is that at the moment, with lots and lots of cafes and restaurants closed that usually use lots of the white eggs, there were lots of white eggs that needed eating. So luckily, some of the supermarkets said, well, we'll sell them for you so they don't go to waste. And so when I opened my box of eggs, there it was. So I wonder if when you next get a box of eggs, have a look. Growing up, this is from Tesco's Free Range Eggs. Um, and see if you've got a white egg as well. Right, we're going to crack our white egg. So we hold it nice and snug in our hands. We're going to tap it to crack it, then turn it over 
and using our thumbs, we're going to open it like a book. Are you ready? You'll be fine. Here we go. It's nice and snug. Tap it to crack it. Did you hear that? Then we turn it over and we open it and pour it in like a book. If the yolk, the yellow bit in the middle, if that splits, don't panic, it's fine. If you get any eggshell in there, don't panic, it's fine. That's why we do it in a separate bowl. Just have a little look for it and pull it out. And at this point, we all need to go and wash our paws. That's right. There we are, all washed nice and speedy here at the burrow. So, we're going to get our mix here and add the last ingredient, that lovely egg. Does anyone know which animal eggs come from? Goats, <laughs> good try, not quite. Cows, oh, another good try, you're getting closer. That's right, it's chickens, well done if you knew that. Eggs come from chickens. And I hate to tell you, but I do know a very good song about chickens, which I think we're going to have to sing. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's get our arms ready like chickens. Chick, 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 chicken. Lay a little egg for me. Chick, 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 chicken. I'd like one for my tea. Because I haven't had an egg since breakfast. And now it's half past three. So, chick, 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 chicken. Lay a little egg for me. <laughs> Very nice, everybody, very nice. Okay, oh, look at that, that looks delicious. So we've got our muffin mix, and now we're just going to put out five cases. You could make six, but they would be a little bit on the small side. So I would go for five, and then you get five really good size muffins. So I've got two spoons, I've got my scooper and my scraper. My scooper scoops, my scraper scrapes. Here we go. So we take a bit of spoon, scrape it in. There we go. And I'm gonna do each one a little bit and then I'll go back to the beginning and make sure they all have the same amount in them. It's so fun making something a little bit different, like muffins. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man that lives on Drury Lane. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Do you know the Muffin Man that lives on Drury Lane? Spatula. Yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane. There we go. So I'm just scraping my bowl down with a spatula. I find you can get a lot of mixture out of it. My two favourite kitchen gadgets of the moment are my spatula and my rotary grater. My two things I could not live without at the moment in my kitchen. What are yours? What do you really enjoy using in your kitchen? Oh yes, sieves are fun, aren't they? Sieves. Mixers, yes, you turn them on and they whiz around, very exciting. So we've got our muffin mix and we're going to put that to the side and just have a little shake out because that's quite a lot of hard work, isn't it, making those muffins? Ah, lift your shoulders up to your ears, give your head a shake. Oh, give your neck a shake, give your nose a shake. Can you twitch your nose like a bunny rabbit? What about your bunny rabbit ears that go flip flop, flip flop, flip flop? Or your bunny rabbit tail that goes wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> That's a good break for us. Now we're just going to quickly make our crumble topping. So we've got our 20 grams of plain flour and we're going to get our butter, which hopefully is still quite cold, mine's beginning to warm up a little bit, and we're going to pop that butter into the flour. And what we're going to do is I want you to imagine that you are a treasure hunter, and the treasure is gold lumps of butter. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to first of all hide all the treasure. So there's not much here at all, so I'm just going to use one hand. I'm going to hide the treasure and then I'm going to try and find it. And when I find it, I'm going to pick it up and pull it apart and drop it back in. So we're looking for the treasure, we're breaking it apart and we're dropping it back into the bowl. And every time we find more and more treasure, it's going to get smaller and smaller as we break it into tiny little lumps. There we go. You can still find a lot of treasure in the world. I once went gold panning, searching for gold in a river in Alaska. We sat for a couple of hours with essentially a sieve and you put it in the water and you shake it and you move it around. Uh, sadly, we didn't find any gold, but we did make memories and that's all that matters. There we go. So I've got lots of little lumps now and I hope you do too. What we need to do next is we're going to put our hands together like we're receiving a present. So you pick your hands like this and you smile, don't you? When you get a present, you always smile and you say, thank you very much. Can you do it? Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. So we're going to use our present hands to go into our bowl. We're going to pick up some of our mix and using our thumbs, we're going to rub it back in. We're not squeezing, we don't want to melt it. We're just gently pushing it back in with our hands. So we pick up a little bit and we gently push it back in. I think I'm gonna do it with one hand, my bowl is so small. So pick it up and rub it back in. And this is doing what's called making breadcrumbs. There we go, we are doing well so far. And it's going to start turning to a lighter shade of yellow, a sort of golden color. And when it makes a golden color, you know you have, you're done. Got lots of little lumps. Lovely. So to that, we're going to add our porridge oats and five grams of brown sugar. There we go. It was such a small amount, I didn't feel I could pop it in a bowl. There we go. And then just give that another little mix around with your paw, like so. And then we're going to put it on top of our muffins. So just one at a time, we're just going to sprinkle that on top and just divide our mixture evenly between the five muffins. Oh, this is looking good so far. It's something a little bit different. I like that, something a little bit different. There we go. So we just want to make sure it's quite even spread among the cases. And then what we want to do to finish the last step is we're going to tap each one down with our fingers. Just a little tap, 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 tap. We're not pushing it, we're just tapping. Tap, 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 tap. Like if you have to wake up your mummy or daddy. You have to tap, 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 tap. Mummy, daddy, wake up, wake up. Tap, 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 tap. And that just helps our crumble cook into our muffin. Beautifully, there we go. Just like that. Then I'm going to pop that into the oven for 12 minutes. There we are, and it's in. I make sure I know what the time is, or set a timer, and um, hopefully at home you've asked a grown-up to put that into the oven for you as well. So well done, everybody. We've made it, hooray. The Gruffalo Crumble Muffins are in the oven. Excellent, very exciting. It's so much fun to cook. Now earlier I told you a little bit about what I've been doing. I've been doing lots of baking for my bunny boxes. So if you've had a bunny box, you've heard of them, that's lovely. Something else I've been doing is I've been making little jars called Little Bunny Bakes. And these are such fun, they look a little bit like rock formations. Shall I come and show you? I'm very proud of these because these make the most delicious little treats. This one is a double brownie mix. Oh, if I undo that top, Oh, look at all that chocolate in top. That's one. And this one is a, a Smarty Oat Mix. Oh, Smarty. And I love cooking from scratch and doing everything step by step. But sometimes 
you don't have much time or sometimes the rain is pouring and you don't have many ingredients in the house and so if you'd like a little bunny bakes jar then do ask your mommy or daddy because they're great things to have around and to quickly whip up some delicious cookies or brownies as a special treat. Right, I did say I would read the Gruffalo. So let's finish with my Bunny Baker song and then I will read the Gruffalo to those who would like to hear it. Little Bunny Bakers, we've had some fun. We've baked a lot, now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye everybody that doesn't want to hear the story and well done for cooking your Gruffalo crumble muffins today. Lovely to see you. I know a couple of people watching. So hello to Annabelle. Hello to Blake and Arlo. I think Daisy and Eliza might be watching. So hi guys. Lovely to have you here with me today. So the book, the story. Oh, it's such a good one. Rosie, are you ready? Rosie's ready. Here we go. The Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Axel Scheffler. Now it is going to be back to front for you because my camera flips around. So you just have to try not to look at the writing. <laughs> try and just see the pictures. There we go. The Gruffalo. A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Is that better? Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. Mm, it's um, terribly kind of you, Fox. But no, I'm going to have lunch with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? Oh, why, didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Oh, where are you meeting him? Here, by these rocks. And his favourite food is roasted fox. <gasps> roasted fox. I'm off, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. And ow saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. Oh, it's frightfully nice of you, Owl. But no, I'm going to have tea with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? Ooh, ooh. A Gruffalo? Why, didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his No. Oh, where are you meeting him? Here, by this stream. And his favourite food is owl ice cream. <gasps> owl ice cream. Twit -twoo. Goodbye, little mouse. And away owl flew. Silly old owl, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. Mouse is feeling very confident about his plan now. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake. And the mouse looked good. Where are you going to? Little brown mouse, come for a feast in my log pile house. No, it's wonderfully snake of you. Good of you, snake, but no. I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? Why, didn't you know? His eyes are orange. His tongue is black. He's got purple prickles all over his back. Hmm, where are you meeting him? Here by this lake and his favourite food is scrambled snake. <gasps> scrambled snake, it's time I hit. Goodbye little mouse and away he slid. Silly old snake, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffer. <gasps> oh. But who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? got knobbly knees and turned out toes <gasps> and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He's got purple prickles all over his back. Oh help. Oh no, it's a <gasps> Gruffalo. My favourite food, the Gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. 
Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see. Everyone is afraid of me. <laughs> All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. It's Snake, said the mouse. Why, Snake, hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he slid to his log pile house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. It's Owl, said Mouse. Why, Owl, hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse, you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is beginning to rumble. My favourite food is Gruffalo Crumble. <gasps> Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said, and quick as the wind, he turned and fled. <laughs> All was quiet in the deep dark wood. A mouse found a nut and the nut was. <laughs> there we go I've got one minute left on my timer so I'm going to say goodbye everybody thank you so much for joining me today today I am Saskia at Little Bunny Bakers goodbye bye bye see you soon